In the following examples, we need to determine both the change of coordinate matrices from B to C and vice versa from C to B. We can choose which one we do first. We pick the easiest one, of course, because we, if we have one, we can determine the other by just taking the inverse matrix of the first one. And that is exactly what we are going to do. So for B, we have the standard basis of P2, and for C, we have some non-standard basis. Now, which one is easier? Well, it's easier to express 1 plus t in terms of 1 t and t squared, and to express 1 in terms of 1 plus t, t plus t squared, and 1 plus t squared. So it's easier to express the basis vectors of C in terms of the basis B than vice versa. So we are going to uh, determine P from C to B first, because it's easier to express V1 in terms of B than to express U1 in terms of C. You can try the, f the other one also, but this one works faster. So do this one first. Because V1 in the basis B, just 1 plus T, in terms of 1 T and T squared, well, that needs as ways 1, 1 and 0. 1 times 1 plus 1 times T plus 0 times T squared. So V1 in B is just 1, 1, 0. And uh, similarly, you can find the other ones. V2 equals t plus t squared, so that is 0 times 1 plus 1 times t plus 1 times t squared. So V2 and B equals just 0, 1, 1. And uh, V3 equals 1 plus t squared, so 1 times 1 plus 0 times t plus 1 times t squared. So V3 and B is just 1, 0, 1. So there we have P from C to B is V1 and B, V2 and B, V3 and B. There we are. Finding the other one is slightly harder. So what we could do is express u1, so 1 in terms of 1 plus t, t plus t squared, and 1 plus t squared. Well, that requires some row reduction, but it's doable, and similarly for the other ones. What we can do as well is just take the inverse of the matrix we just found. And that's what we're going to try. So we compute the inverse. Here we have p from c to b, augmented with the standard matrix. And we do row reduction. Uh, first we get rid of this one here, using a minus one. Uh, and we are over here. Then we get rid of the one here by using another minus one. Uh, then we want to get rid of the two, so we divide by two. Then we are over here, we get on the uh, the last row, all those halves here. And then we want to get of a rid of the minus 1 and the 1 over here. So we do a plus 1 and a minus 1. And there we have our inverse. Uh, which gives us uh, the inverse uh, with a sloppy notation here, P from B to C. Now, and how can we use this? Well, if we have, for example, our P of T, 1 plus 2T minus T squared, it's easy to compute P in the basis B, because P is a standard basis. So we have just 1 times 1 plus 2 times T minus 1 times T squared. So P in the basis B equals 1, 2 minus 1. And then we can compute using our matrix P in the basis C, because P in the basis B, C equals P from C to B times PB. So we have our matrix times our vector, and then we find uh, P in the basis C, 2, 0, minus 1. And if you have your answer, you can easily check it, of course, if P, P in the basis C equals 2, 0, minus 1. So what would be our P then? 2 times 1 plus T minus 1 times 1 plus T, t squared, so 2 minus 1 equals 1, plus 2T minus T squared, which is indeed our P of T. So yes, there we have our P of C. Now you see how you can use your matrix P from C to B or P from B to C to convert one coordinate vector into another coordinate vector.